This video is how to use Bybit Web3 Wallet, which is a crypto wallet within the Bybit app. I'll show you how to get a wallet set up and then use all of the features, timestamps for everything down in the description below. There's a few different type of wallets that we can actually set up within the Bybit app. Actually, they're all the same type of wallet, but they keep the seed phrase and the wallet's keys slightly differently. So you can choose between them. You can have all of them running at once if you want anyway. So firstly, download the Bybit app, just the Bybit Exchange app, and then good to have an account on there. Assuming you already have that if you're watching this video. If you don't, I'll leave a link below to Bybit. You can get a deposit bonus with that link. So check out uh, that link in the description. But from there, if you have an account, we can go to the Web3 wallet, right? So up at the top, it says Web3 right here. So I'm just gonna click on that and then we go through to this. So it's actually different. You have the exchange and then you have Web3. Now from here, we can set up the different types of wallets. So go to wallet in the bottom right. And then for here, I've got these set up already. So what I'm gonna do is actually just go to the top, click the buy bit wallet right here. And then it says manage wallets and add wallets. So I'm gonna go to add wallets. If you haven't got one set up already, then it will just have a big screen here saying set up your wallet and give you the options. Now there's some different options to set up the different types of wallet. So the first option is letting Bybit uh, create and hold the keys to the wallet. So this is not self custody on your behalf. Bybit are keeping the keys and signing the transactions and everything. Now this takes away the you know, seed phrase from you. So you don't have to write it down. You don't have to keep it, keep it safe anywhere. You just say, look, Bybit, you handle all of that. So it's really easy, but it's not self custodial, right? Because by, uh, Bybit have the keys. So that's a trade off that you might be willing to make. Now, the other way you can see down here, import wallet. This is importing your own wallet if you have it already. So if you're using a hot wallet with like trust wallet or something else, and you have the seed phrase, you can just import it here and use it within the Binance app. And the other one, if you press create wallet at the top, is an MPC wallet. Now this is self custodial. This MPC means that there's a seed phrase and it actually gets split up and encrypted. Bybit hold one of the shares and you hold the other two, one on your phone and then one in your cloud account. Now that means you control the wallet, so it's self custodial but it's a little bit easier than the seed phrase type wallet because you actually don't see the seed phrase at all. It's just kept in your cloud and if you need to recover the wallet, it's done for you through a password. Um, so here's the kind of layout of which way that you might wanna go. Seed phrase, that is your control. Keyless is the MPC wallet where the keys are split up and you keep some in the cloud. These are both self custodial. And then you have the custodial wallet from Bybit which is where they keep the keys. So some are easier, some are more complex. Custodial is the easiest type, buy a bit, hold everything. Keyless may be good because you get self custody, but you don't have to write down a seed phrase. You just remember a password. And then seed phrase is pure self custody on your part. It's more technical, but you have complete and total, you know, control of the seed phrase. So it's up to you which one that you actually want to use. You can use all of them at the same time within Bybit Wallet. So if you go back to the page, you can see I'm in manage wallets here. I have the keyless wallet set up, which is MPC. I also have Bybit wallet, which is custodial here. And if you wanna press add wallets, you can import uh, your own seed phrase as well if you want. Once you've got one or more of the wallets set up, it will take you to this wallets page so you can see all of the assets and then all of the supported blockchains. Now in the custodial wallet, you have more supported blockchains. Essentially all of the Ethereum chains and the scaling layers you have Bitcoin here and some others. You can see all of these and uh, scroll through them. If you want to use a specific blockchain, you can just click one. So if I'm on Arbitrum here, this is now all of my balances on Arbitrum. And you can see any balances that you have will be down here. You've got a list of tokens. And if you do have balances, uh, they'll be at the top there so you can choose them. Now from here, you can also see potential NFTs that you have on this chain, right? And any other types of assets like staking or anything like that but essentially you have your tokens right here. Now, what you can't see is any DeFi positions. You might be able to see that in staking and you can see that in the applications as well in the DAP browser. So from here, you've got the wallet set up and you've got supported chains. You can also change the wallets up here at the top. So click that, go to your keyless wallet. And then this is a different wallet with different wallet addresses and everything. So you have different balances here, but you sign transactions differently because the keyless wallet is you signing transactions Whereas you go to the Bybit wallet custodial, 
it's them with the keys and signing transactions. So from here, we can look at our token balances and add in any tokens that we might want to have if they're not right here. So the way that you would do that is go to manage tokens down at the bottom. And then it says add custom token. So I want to add this in. The network is Arbitrum because it was on that before in the previous page. So from here, you can add any tokens in, in that you have on any network. So as an example here, I've just got USDT. That's the contract address. If you don't know the contract address of the token that you want or you know that you have, but you can't see it, just go to something like CoinGecko, search for the token, you can get the address and then paste it in here. So I've got the token address here, press confirm, and it searches on that blockchain. It tells me that this token is USDT. It has six decimals, I can press confirm. That token will be added in as a token balance so that you can see it. So sometimes it doesn't add them in manually, so you can do it yourself and add the token balances. We can deposit and withdraw from the wallets. Now Bybit supports the Bybit wallet, the custodial wallet, automatically with the Bybit exchange. If you're using MPC or your own seed phrase and you've loaded your own wallet in here, it won't be automatically linked to the exchange. You'll have to deposit and withdraw manually. But if you are using the custodial wallet, you can very easily deposit and withdraw. So just press deposit on the chain that you want it on. So for here, I've chosen Arbitrum. So that's the chain that I want to uh, actually get some funds into. Press deposit. And then from here it says, you know, which asset do you want to deposit? So I'll just deposit some ETH. And then this is your wallet address. So if you have another exchange or another wallet that you're sending from, this is the address of your wallet that you have with Bybit. However, if you're using the Bybit exchange, which I guess many people will be, just press transfer from Bybit account. So press that. It goes through to your funding account. So I'm gonna press funding account, confirm. And then all you need to do is just withdraw how much you have in your Bybit wallet. You can see the Bybit wallet address is pre-populated and verified. So if you have a balance in your Bybit trading account, or it will be in your Bybit funding account, it's gonna show this. Then just choose how much you wanna withdraw, press withdraw, and that will send from your Bybit exchange account into the Bybit wallet. Like I said, if you're using the MPC wallet or another wallet that you've loaded in, you won't be able to do that transfer. You'll have to do it manually. So I'm in the MPC wallet now, Arbitrum 1. I want to deposit ETH. This is my wallet address. So I'm going to have to copy this, then go out into my Bybit Exchange account. So go to the home and then back to Exchange. And then from here, we're going to go to our assets and our funding account. And then from here, withdraw. So I'll press ETH withdraw, and then it says, where do you want to send it? You'll see here that the address, you can see Bybit wallet, that's the Bybit custodial wallet you can very easily send over, but that's not what one I want to use right now. I want to send it to my MPC wallet, which is different. So I'm going to have to manually paste in my address right here. Once that's done and you've pasted that in, you can just do a normal withdrawal from the centralized exchange. Um, but the Bybit wallet right here is the custodial wallet that you've set up. This is exactly the same if you want to withdraw funds from the wallet, maybe send them back into the exchange. So the Bybit wallet is automatically linked. So I'm in the custodial wallet here. So I've got some assets on Arbitrum 1. So I'll click ETH and I'll click send. And it says, where do you want to send it to? You can see that the Bybit funding account is automatically linked. So I can just press that and choose the amount that I want to send. And it's going to tell me what the gas fees will be and just send it over to my funding account. Now, if you're in the MPC wallet, then you're going to have to go into the exchange, get the deposit address, copy that, and then paste it into the MPC wallet. So it's the same exact thing, just the Bybit custodial wallet is a little bit easier because it's linked automatically. Now we'll use the swap and bridge feature within the app. This is a decentralized exchange. So if you have some assets on supported blockchains, you can swap them here. Swap is in the middle. And from here it says swap and bridge. So if you have supported chains to bridge between, you can actually send from one blockchain to another blockchain. So for example, if I do ETH right here, so USDT on ETH, and I want to search for USDT on, let's say Optimism. So we'll search for USDT. So that is a contract there. So if supported, what you can do is send assets from one chain to another. So what Bybit are going to be doing is using a bridge and they'll charge you some fees for that. Uh, and you can obviously need to pay a gas fee as well, depending on the chain. So from one chain to another, but I'll just show you a swap. So we're going to be swapping uh, some ETH from my Arbitrum account, which I have some balance on. So we can go over to Arbitrum 1 
and then I've got some ETH here. And then I want to swap that into another chain on Arbitrum 1. So click the same chain and then search for a token that you want to swap it into. So you can see you have to choose the assets and the chains at all times because this is a swap and a bridge. So you have to make sure you're doing the right thing. If you want to just swap assets, choose the same chain on both ends from and to. And if you want to bridge, you can try to do that. And as long as it's supported, it will let you bridge. But you may be paying some gas fees there. I would always maybe send it back into the exchange and then withdraw it out on the other network if you want to bridge. That could be a bit cheaper, but you can see the fees right here before you do anything. So up in the top right, you can see I'm using Bybit wallet here, but if I can switch between them, just press Bybit wallet and you can switch between the wallets that you have. From here in the right, I'm gonna click the options just to make sure that the swap will go through in the way that I want. So we don't really know what the gas fee is for right here. It just automatically you know, chooses fast for me, which should be fine on this network. From here, slippage tolerance. Slippage is the difference between the price quote that you get given before you swap and then the actual price at which you can trade on the blockchain. There may be a difference between that. And so slippage is something that you can allow. So let's say you're trading an amount. Are you accepting a 5% potentially worse trade? So I'm not, so 1%. So if I'm quoted, you know, the, the exchange rate is gonna be some amount, then I'm saying it can be worse by 1% and I'm fine with that but any more than 1%, it will actually cancel the trade for me. So I'm gonna press save because bet between ETH and USDT, the slippage should be almost zero, should be very, very small. I'll put 1% as the example, and then we have to choose you know, an amount that we can trade, whatever that may be. And it's going to see the uh, exchange rate for me. So pretty good. And then down here, it says, here's the gas fee, one cent. Slippage is 1%, which is what I'm allowing. And then the minimum amount received right here. So if you press swap, it's going to tell you the potential gas fee, the wallet that you're uh, doing the trade on, and then what will actually happen. You can press confirm, and then that will go through and confirm the transaction. Now we'll have a look at using the DAP browser. If you don't want to use the swap feature or any of the apps that they give you, then you can use the protocols directly through DAP browser. So down in the bottom, press DAP browser. And then up here, any DAP that you want to connect to, just put the URL in at the top and you'll connect to it and you can connect your wallet. So what I'm gonna do is actually just go down to explore the dApps and then go that way. So they have a list here of popular dApps that will be vetted. And so you know it's the you know the real dApp that you're going to. So Uniswap V3, so we can click on that. If you don't wanna use the swap feature directly within Bybit Wallet, you can use any protocol like OneInch or other exchange aggregators, which may give you the best uh, exchange. From here, I'm gonna connect my wallet, but I wanna choose the chain. So I'm gonna click Arbitrum 1 and then it tells me the wallet address that I'm connecting here. So I'll connect that. I can change this as well. So in the top right hand corner, if you click buy bit wallet, you can switch between your wallets that you connect to the DAP and you can also switch networks here as well. So you can switch between the supported networks. Now from here, what I wanna do is actually connect my wallet. It says install MetaMask, connect MetaMask, doesn't matter, just click that. That's uh, just the wallet connector that you have to press and it shows my balances here and it shows that uh, I'm on the Arbitrum network. From here, you can see it now reads my balance, so my ETH balance right here, and then I can actually swap to another token, let's just say USDT, put an amount in here, something like that, uh, and then it's gonna tell me what the swap would be on Uniswap. So that's using Uniswap, you can go to other dApps as well, you can connect your wallets uh, to them, use them directly. Every time that you go ahead and sign a transaction, it's gonna pop up with the gas fee, and you're gonna have to confirm it with your 2FA, um, for the Bybit wallet, again, they hold the key, so they're gonna sign the transaction. For the other wallets, your keys are you know, loaded in here ready to sign the transaction as well. If you need some more help on sending and receiving cryptos out of wallets, how to use blockchains with gas and how to use exchanges, I'll leave all of those videos down in the description as well. Now from here as well, if you do want to connect to any DAP, for example, on a different device, if you're using a computer or you have a wallet on your computer, you can actually connect this wallet to the DAP or wallet on your computer as well through Wallet Connect. So if you're using a DAP like Uniswap on your other device, like a computer, where it says connect wallet in the top right hand corner, click connect wallet, but you wanna connect your Bybit wallet, right? Well, what you can do is just go to the main page with the wallets right here. Up in the top right, there's this QR scanner. You can see right here, just press that 
And then when wallet connect comes up, it's going to give you a QR code. So you can connect to this wallet with all of the balances with any DAP on any device through wallet connect. So that means you don't have to, you know, load the wallet into your uh, computer or anything. You can keep everything within your phone and connect to any DAP with that QR code. Through the homepage, Bybit also gives us a list of the most popular DAPs in crypto being used right now. Uh, also some other kind of Bybit ecosystem DAPs. Bybit have their own layer two called Mantle, a lot of applications on there as well. But up at the top, you can see Apex. Apex is a decentralized exchange, uh, mostly for trading crypto futures. So for day trading or speculating on prices, but what we can do is go to the home, connect our wallet, uh, get some funds from our Bybit exchange into our decentralized wallet and then trade on this DEX. I've got a full video guide for Apex. I'll link it in the description if you want to know how to get funds out from your exchange into a wallet and then trade on there. But from here, we'll go back. Staking as well. Staking is very popular. So what you'll need to do is buy some ETH on the Bybit exchange and withdraw that ETH over the Ethereum mainnet into your wallet. Right. So this is probably Bybit custody wallet that they're using here. From there, you can go ahead and stake it on the blockchain. So press Lido and then stake teeth down at the bottom, currently yielding 3% of staking rewards. You can go ahead and stake right here. So pretty easy. Uh, you can also just go to the DAP browser and use the protocol directly as well. So DAPs, go down to Lido here and it just connects us to the Lido DAP. So either way is exactly the same. It's just on the homepage, Bybit gives us some easier ways of doing things. You can actually get staked ETH on the Bybit centralized exchange as well and just leave it there uh, and still get the reward. So you've just got options, whatever you want to do, if you want to take self-custody or not. Uh, and then you can see some other popular dApps that you may want to use right down here um, as you wish. Like I said, I'll leave the Bybit deposit bonus down in the description if you are new and some other uh, deposit links down there as well. And all the other helpful videos that you may need, I'll link down at the bottom of the description. I'm James, this is Manzi G. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.